And we are here for what? Rail Riders uh, Action Activate is the show. Rail Riders is the show we're reviewing. It is a fan Power Ranger series. Episode 4 just came out last week, and we just watched both versions of it. What do we mean by that? Well, here's the thing. YouTube, as we know, isn't the most kind when it comes to using Power Rangers Super Sentai footage. Full stop. YouTube isn't the most kind. Period. I know, but if there's anything we do on the show, it's ramble. Um, so, uh, a lot of their episodes, I think only one, they haven't had to do this. Anytime there's like a good Zord fight, yeah. YouTube goes, eh, you're using copywritten stuff, which is, is so dumb. that it catches the, the Zord fights, but it doesn't catch the suit fights as much. Like, I wonder what, you know. Who know. knows? But, uh, they have an edited version usually on YouTube and then a full version through their Patreon. So we watched both. And I think the Patreon, I mean, you could check it out. There's perks. I think you get it early and there's other stuff going on too, but you could watch for free. You can watch the version on their Patreon. So yes. they have pay tiers. This is Zenith films, by the way. Yes. But I was able to watch it just by joining their Patreon at the $0 fee to begin with. Yep. Um, but yeah, we're here to talk about it before we dive into the review proper. Uh, initial thoughts and feelings about it. Uh, it, it was good. Uh, I think overall it was good. Like, like um, I, I think uh, some of the complaints I had from some of the other episodes about some of the, the comedy, I didn't have those complaints. I, I, there, was, there was, there was, there was still some comedy, but it all worked. It wasn't like out of place. I didn't feel um, some good civilian fights uh, that moved the plot forward. I think is the next episode, the last episode. I is believe like so. It? Yeah, it is a little weird because I have watched Tokuger, so but it's, it's weird because I watched it years ago, so I forget some of it. So I'm like, wait, what happens next? And like, did they skip this? But also, how are they going to do all this? You know, so it's just it's a little bit messing with my head. Like I have two different timelines in my head, but uh, it does get me did get me excited for the next episode. Um, I do have one. You know, there's a little nitpicks. I have, I have one sort of big nitpick. I have a gripe. Yeah, Maybe I'll sit on it. Maybe, I bet you it's not the same one either. Uh, definitely nesting on it for sure. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, for, for me, I enjoyed it as well. Um, this one felt like it took itself a little more seriously than the others. And that's not to discredit the previous episodes. This one just felt like, um, you know, the team's established, the villains are established, we're moving things forward. And there wasn't that time of, um, unnecessary goofiness, I guess is the easiest way to put it. It was just solid, like moving forward. And that might have to do somewhat with the footage or the tone of the original show. Um, And power agents in general, I think does that. Like it starts off kind of, Whoa, this is serious. And then, Hey, goofy, goofy, goofy. And then at the end, it's like, wait, no, this is serious. And like, yeah. Um, Yeah. There was a thing. Well, I'm kind of jumping in. They show this character who clearly is the original Japanese actor. Yep. What was your thoughts on this whole thing here? I love this part, how they used it where they were there, they didn't say anything, they didn't dub over anything, and they right. just let it be. Yeah, I, I thought that was cool too. And uh, I think in, in the original, this was a much bigger character. Mm-hmm. And they're clearly not using them in that way here because of a civilian face, not a civilian face, a, a human face. So I think that was smart. Again, because I kept expecting like a Rita Repulsa, like, oh, what are you doing here? Right? Kind of mm-hmm. not matching up, but... Yep. Um, supposedly this is, I didn't realize this till after the fact, but the opening on the Patreon is a new opening. Oh, but I watched the other one X amount of months ago and the song is the same and the footage looked the same. So I don't know what was changed, but if you want to watch them back to back, that's something you can check out. Um, and, uh, yeah, rail riders go is stuck in my head for the next half. I know it, it's a really good theme. Like it's, it's solid. I like I think, it. I think better. I criticized it on some of the earlier episodes. Not real bad, but it definitely won me over. And I definitely. I'm yeah, it, it's one like, yeah, it does everything a Power Ranger theme should. It gets you amped up in the beginning of the episode, getting you ready. And then subtly as the episode plays, it just, the chorus is stuck in your head. So really solid stuff. Agreed. 
Um, th- oh yeah, I was about to ask if this is the Patreon version, and it is. It is. So, um, kind of picking up where we left off, the villains have a plan. Um, uh, Void Queen, whose name I forgot in the show. Um, what? Oh, oh, not Greta. The other. Void yeah, I remember Greta. I don't remember Void Queen's name. Uh, I forget now too. Yeah, Madame Noir. Madame Noir. Madame Noir. Ninja Steel point for you. Um, so Madame Noir is trying to marry off Greta. Right. Um, trying to make her the empress of darkness. not evil of something else. Darkness, darkness, mm-hmm. probably. Um, can tell we took notes, right? So, <laughs> um, and that's going on. We know from last episode she doesn't want that, but she right. kind of feels forced into it. Blah blah blah. I mean, um, she's still kind of in love with Schwartz, and it's like unclear if he loves her, but he at least feels like he needs to protect her, and he feels strongly about. He her. has love for her. We don't know if he's in love with her. I, I guess. Think- I my feeling at, both in this and in the original was that it was sort of more like a paternal sort of thing, but that doesn't mean she doesn't feel romantic. You know what I mean? Like kind of like the kid having a crush on the the cool uncle or something. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what that sounded weird that I said that, but it did. <laughs> it, 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 out, I, I guess I, there's like. Go ahead. I was gonna say it reminds me more, um, unless it's romantic. Of um, you're gonna have to help me in, with the name, but uh, Trakina. In Lost Galaxy, mm-hmm. um, had mentorship oh, from the, uh, was it Villamax? Was like a, what was it Villamax? That sounds right, like the okay. cowboy guy, and the, no, yeah. the sword guy. But he was from the cowboy world. They were on the cowboy world. Whatever. I, don't I know it's been mean. a long time. You watched yeah, it more yeah, recently yeah. than I did. Well, and that was that was a similar. Yeah, it feels like a mentor, a paternal figure. But some of the stuff she says sounds romantic. But I'm like, what I'm seeing is maybe she's so young and uh, like ignorant for lack of a better term that she doesn't understand her feelings or whatever but it's a little unclear but i remember being a little unclear in the other one too and that's i think on purpose yeah um either way we know that they share a bond uh yeah. he definitely wants to protect her at all costs as we you know find out from last episode and is doubled down on this episode uh but she's possessed yeah which is uh pretty gnarly yeah uh, cool effect from the sentai which i liked because this design is like you know uh yeah. grimace at home is it's the easiest weird. way to put it? Yeah, it's definitely one of. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to put it, actually. And, and it, it, I think I had said when I originally watched the Sentai, this is going years back. I was doing stuff with Collection DX, and I had gotten sample figures of Tokyo, and I was like, "This looks like the dumbest suits I've ever seen ever." Let me watch some episodes, laugh at them, and understand what it is when I do the review. And I did the review, and I'm like, "Well, let me watch two and three and four. And I can, and I, I didn't like the mechs. I didn't like the, the her like like there's so much visually that I'm like I don't like this but yet it won me over regardless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, out of all the designs we've seen in the show, really that's the only one that I feel is out of place and not from Rail Riders. This is from a total no, future so, perspective. Yeah. Um but other than that, like, you know, I like this story beat. Um, I don't know the Tokyo side, so I don't know how much this is like a one for one kind of thing or how they're kind of adapting it. A little I think bit it's somewhere in between. It's it's definitely not one for one, but it's not like a completely different out of left field story either. It's not like RPM or something. Um, I want to say um, we've talked about the civilian fight scenes in these episodes mm-hmm. a lot, and this episode made me feel like when I was watching that all of the ranger actors felt confident in what they're doing. Not everybody is a martial artist, but they feel mm-hmm. confident in them being in these roles and fighting, which I appreciated as a viewer. I think that's mostly true, but no green for sure is green is a martial artist. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And I think red and orange, I don't know if they are, but they do a good job. Like this is a little wall kick thing. I think some of the others don't uh, necessarily do it. Whether or not they're martial artists, they're all better than they were to begin with. Mm -hmm. And this showcases all of them, but there's definitely some that you can tell are Hollywood kicks and punches. Mm -hmm. That might be the fault of the camera angle. It might be the best take they had. I, you know, you want to be safe. That's more important because you don't want to actually be hitting people. But I definitely generally agree with you. But there's a few times where it's sort of like, a, oh, I can see that's two inches away. Or I'm going to kick you slowly. And I, my thought was like, why not just cut those parts out or cut like three seconds earlier or, or yeah. speed it up by 10%? Because it's – I feel like this whole scene was like 50% was like this is like professional level quality. And the other 50% was like really good for a fan film. You know what I mean? And so it's all good, but I'm like, ooh, if you if you could have tightened it up or taken that shot one more time, like you could have yeah. got it really, really tight. But have, yeah. having not actually made 
like sure. not been yeah. behind the camera of films, but having been in fight scenes on a film one time ever. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it a lot of it is angle. Uh, yeah. It's it's kind of half and half. But I think you know probably time constraints being sure. involved and just again like everybody you know being thrown in the mix and just go go go. No, um, definitely I, agree. I enjoyed it's all, it. It's all competently done, and it's all no like the the performers that were not as strong are stronger than they were. Yes, 100%. Yeah. You, uh, and to to me, this was a, a good showcase, whether intentional or not, of because this is a shorter Ranger series, we mm-hmm. see the progression of the Rangers in the beginning before they get their powers. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, martial arts right. and stuff. And this is them, whether the characters or actors or whoever are skilled in martial arts or not, these fight scenes felt like they, the characters were going and fighting as opposed yeah. to the others where it was, Oh, you can kind of tell this or that. Like I, I appreciate that. Also, the water fight scene that was fun. very cool homage. I'm assuming that was on purpose. If it wasn't, then that's just a good idea that I've oh, seen what? in a lot of other martial arts films. But doing the sticky hands with it was really cool. Homage and, to what? Um, oh, sorry. Um, just some like 80s and 90s uh, martial arts movies that I watch. It reminded me of Jet Li. Um, okay, okay. No, of- I like kung fu hands and sticking and stuff. I got that. I thought it was like, this is from the second John wick, or this is from like a specific thing. It's probably in like one or two very recognizable movies. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but when he's very iconic and I liked it, but I thought you were like, it's from this. And I know if it, if it is, I can't think of it, but I've seen that fight at least twice other than this. And I love it every time. Um, also, uh, go, go back one frame, by the way. Speaking of things in Tokyo and Rail Riders, where mm-hmm. the first time we see him visually, we're like, I don't know about that. I don't know why, but this episode, I'm like, I love the fact that he's wearing an orange hard hat the entire time. Oh yeah, and again, it's he's weird, but he's supposed to be weird, so it yeah. makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah, I I loved it. I thought it was the coolest in this episode and most endearing. I don't know. Um, also, big props to not only the um, the way that they did the ADR for the um, what you call it, the Megazord morph. scene after this, oh, this yeah. whole morph sequence, th- this is what you say. would show anybody of what is Power Rangers and how does the team do their stuff. This is what I would show them. It's uh-huh. everybody getting together, saying a one liner or two. Yeah. The villains say something in synchronicity. They do but their morph together. The other footage, as I was thinking the same thing. They're really tight here, but you cut from that. This is Sentai footage, and they go flying. That is seamless. Yes. And they do all the stuff, and then it flies back. Look at that. That was phenomenal. Tight. That was super, super tight. Well done. Yep. And then, yeah, they have this scene of them, and then right into the rest of the morph. Like, it was – yeah. And the morph's great. And I love the call-out. They've done it a couple times where it's Rail Rider Red, Rail Rider Blue. Like, I love it. I love all that. That's so good. Uh, I think they say their numbers, but yes, I agree. Did, uh, um, yeah, you're probably you know right. I'm gonna br- yeah because they could change color, but the number. I know. Um, I'm gonna give my nitpick now. My big nitpick for the whole thing, and it's not special effects. It's not story. It's not performance. It's not writing. It's sound. Uh, it it's not unwatchable. It's you know you could clearly hear most of what's being said most of the time. There's a few times later on when the Empress like gets her new human body where it's sort of not clear if she a male and a female body or like it's like they're playing with gender a little bit. But for some reason, she's way quieter than everyone else. Like The quality there just wasn't as good for some reason. And there's a little bit of that throughout. But something else, I couldn't put my finger on it. And actually, I'll back up a second because uh, during the civilian fight uh, and a few times I was like, the, the music's like a little bit too loud and it's just like going on for a long time. And I realized – and this is probably a time-saving, cost-saving measure. And maybe they did it in the other episodes, and I just didn't notice it as much. During the fights, when people were being hit, there was no, there was no, uh, there's no. Yep. Sh- it was just music and dialogue for a long enough time, several times. And I'm like, oh, this is a little weird. This feels a little bit like a music video instead of a fight scene. Not because of the performances, but because of the sound. And 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 also a lot of times it, I, I noticed some of the actors looking like they were overdubbing their own lines, which again mm. has to happen. But yeah. just I don't remember it. And we watched this month ago. And people might be like, "You said the same thing last time," but I don't remember it being this noticeable 
and that's my main critique of this. Other than I that, definitely I preferred the sound when they were more versus not. To yes, your point. yes, and I think, um, yeah, it's just a matter of being a little sparse, but like covering up a lot of sound effects that should be there with more music, which uh, a little bit you can get away with, but I feel like. It was so much that I was. I noticing. think it was the duration more than anything. Yeah, probably. But yeah. but again, that's that is crazy. so creepy. By the way, these that eyes. Is creepy. Yeah. yeah, going back to how she's like almost cute, ugly, and then now she's like, Rawr. now she's the yeah. grimace that eats you. Exactly. Uh, you are the mm-hmm. McNugget. Um, this scene was cool. I like. Uh, so this is part of it. This is officially in the territory of if you watch on YouTube, everything's the same. You have yeah. to watch on Patreon to know any of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, basically um, at the end of this fight, right about here is when it's like you don't see any of yeah. this. I liked the intervention of um, the conductor during this fight. I liked that a lot. Um, cool side shot of uh, the emperor or the mom. Oh, yeah. Where you see the back of her head looks like the side of a mama yeah. evil. That's what I'm going to call her. Mama evil. <laughs> Hey, this, you know that you're getting the action activate Power Rangers review treatment when I can't remember a character's name and we just start calling them weird stuff. <laughs> Mama Evil, Tommy Tuba, whatever. That's true. I do think it's funny that Greta, like Evil Greta, is like, General, why are you wasting your time with them? We could just go get the conductor. And he's like, you're right. So let's have a Megazord battle. I was like, yep. what? Okay, sure. Why not? Um, also, the thing about this fight that, again, you, get, you can only really blame the sentai i in power rangers traditionally don't love when a base megazord is taken over and then it just is like omnipotent against the advanced newer megazords really bothers me you could you could think like maybe they're holding back a little you know because there's still two of them so yeah um maybe he's so evil he's a general like they're Power Rangers, but he's like he knows tactics, and he's like I don't know. But that he knew bother. their Megazord off the bat. Like, come on. I understand your complaint. It it didn't really bother me though. Like like I was kind of okay with it. it this is n- only a slight against Tokuger. Nothing against Rail Riders. No, I mean that. Yeah, that's how it went. I was trying to remember. I know we the the six Rangers Zord was there, but the Diesel Megazord was that introduced in one of the other episodes? I, I don't remember. recall. I don't believe. And it I, I know I remember it happening in Tokyo. So I'm like, did it happen in Rail Riders? I don't know. I don't think so. I think until this point, we've maybe only had one or two Megazords. Right. Okay. I don't um, recall off the top of my head, but again, this is what I like about the pacing of this show is these Megazords are introduced. If we've seen them or we haven't seen them, we're like, that makes sense. Time has passed. Yeah, we all see yeah, we know time has passed. And then the auxiliary police card one comes in. It actually reminded me a little bit of like Megaforce, where it's like, here's another one. Okay, like maybe that is the first time we're seeing it. Whatever, yeah. you know. I that's the other thing I, I want to compare to Megaforce where this I appreciated more than Megaforce, where Megaforce every episode was like, here's the MacGuffin you've been waiting for. Whereas this is time has passed, we get new stuff, we're not making a big deal about it, we're using it when we need it. Right. Uh, I love this Zord. Um, yeah. Greta's like Emperor Zord thing. If there was a figure of this, and I don't think there was, I would get no. it. They had a Shadow Liner figure, which I want, like the standard Shadow Liner, which I wanted. But it was like when I was getting, because I, I, I got a lot of Tokyo stuff like a year after it came out from Pretty Cheap. I didn't get many of the Zords, but I got like the, the Morphern and a bunch of other stuff. Like, And at that time, when everything was cheap, it was still like $230 for the Shadow Line thing. I'm like, wow. I don't even know. It's probably way more now. But if they had this one, I might have pulled the trigger. Hey, we could see in two months or one That's month. At Morphagon? Yeah. Hey, I don't could... remember if I've ever seen one in real life. What if you did, though? What if it was loose on a table? What would your price be? Complete. Know. Uh, you know, it would depend on if I was making money. Because for those that don't know, I sell artwork at these shows. You're was, you're not gangbusters, but you're doing pretty good. It's I'm Saturday. Doing, you're doing pretty good. If I'm doing pretty good and I haven't bought anything else, I, I would drop $200 on it. Woo! All right. You heard it here, folks. $200 for whoever has a shadow liner. I've made money and haven't spent money. You know what I mean? If, if I, you if, have a shadow liner for under $200, that means he will buy it right now. Sign no, up no, no, if no, you no, DM no, no, him. No. No, I need to make Instagram one. at Gazbot. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, this fight's really cool. I love when multiple mechs are evolved, especially when a good one is corrupted. And the fact that we get five in one fight and it's right. just kind of happenstance is great. 
I love it also because they have the two separate Zords fire everything have, and it's like, oh yeah, that didn't do anything. So like, well, we got it. Okay, it's not just like it, like a Power Rangers a lot. It's like once, oh, we know how to make an Ultra Zord, so let's just everybody combine all the time. It's like, oh no, here's an actual reason to have to do this because we cannot do anything against yep. this. Uh, oh, and then we get to see what Schwartz had said, which we all knew it was like, oh, I'll work. We'll, you know, blah, blah, blah. but in case yeah. you were didn't know, in case you forgot, in case you were actually a kid, you might have it. So then. He's like, oh, I gotta keep my promise, but of course they both like fail their promise. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and then he he, there's a problem in the, the Zord, and he goes to confront. And whoa, the conductor's still on board, and he says something. He's like, "What's the meaning of this?" He sees he beat up a guy, and he says, "Oh, it seems like this bunny has some fight." And then he's like, "And here's my lucky foot, or something like that." And then here's my lucky foot. And then he they don't show it, but obviously he got kicked out, and that's just like a footage thing. Um, which is sort of just like, okay, I guess just banter. But then later on, yeah. it's like, oh, big spoilers. He's the Easter bunny. Now, yeah. let me tell you, that's stupid and I love it. It's so ridiculous. I love it. So I think the reason I don't like it as much is because you don't have joy in your heart. That too. Uh, <laughs> no, is I, I thought it would be a little more sophisticated than that. And it was being hyped up a lot more. And I think if it was just sprung on us right, uh, and just hopped on screen, it might have been a little bit – yeah, I know. Um, it might have been uh, a little bit better. But the fact that it was built as a cliffhanger, I'm like, oh. Because this whole episode, I'm like, is he about to reveal it? Is he about to reveal it? And then he's like, I'm the Easter Bunny. I'm like, I don't care. In Tokyo, he was not the Easter Bunny. Oh, What? Yeah, so for me, it was a little bit more of a surprise because, like, I'm like, well, I, I kind of, you know, I don't expect that, you know, because like, I'm like, well, okay, you know, like, um, there's other stuff in Tokyo which I'm not going to mention in case you do watch it, but like, there is no point in Tokyo where he says, hey, by the way, poof, I'm the Easter Bunny. So I thought that was a cool way to have it be different. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, it's different. I'll give it that. <laughs> different strokes. It fits. For sure. In most seasons, I wouldn't like it. In this season, it fits because the whole thing is imagination and, yeah. you know. I, I'm waiting for them to explain it next episode. I'm reserving my full judgment, I, fully I, partial I am, judgment. I feel like the, the – like, again, they've deviated somewhat from the plot of the original show, but not a ton. And they've had to truncate a lot, you know. Um, but if the major point – if the major, like – the ending of Tokyo has certain things that are explained and wrapped up certain ways. And I would be shocked if this strayed really far from that because it feels like that's where they're going with some of this stuff. Maybe not, but like, I mean, they, they led me astray with the Easter bunny thing. Like I didn't see that coming, but, and if they do it, knowing what I know from that show and having seen what I've seen on this, it'll make perfect sense. It, it'll, it'll, it, it'll fit. It'll match this. You show know what I have to say about that? What? Rail riders go, rail riders go. <laughs> they um, make a little joke about the the uh, stuff being a toy, not available in North America because there's no toys for us, and it's a yep. toy. toy. Um, which again was fine. It was just a quick little yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I, oh, I appreciated that. There was another joke in here. There, there was a few jokes that we missed, but like overall, the comedy was. I have no issues with any of the comedy in this one. Agreed. Um, Yellow, I think, is the the kind of angry badass one. And when the new evil Zord appears, it's like, I want that. And like, it's for killing. Like, that was funny. That, yeah. that was funny. And I, and I agreed because the shadow liner is cool. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I just said, I'd like to buy one. If you what have you one, by the way, less than $200, remember <laughs> at Gazbot Instagram. You know what? If you have one, it, if, it, if it's loose, I don't care if it's loose, as long as it's complete and in good condition for less than $200 shipped, I would buy that actually. Um, a simple joke and badgering is turned into a business right, transaction right. commitment. Okay, let's. What do you think of the Ultra Zord mode? Um, I I like it a lot more than I thought I would. When they said they were combining, I'm like, this is gonna look chunky and dumb, and this looks not chunky and dumb because there's it's such a slender Zord to begin I was with. I'm like, say, the fact it, it just looks like Lego a secondary board. mode. Yeah, it, it basically Lego bricks put it together. I like the helmet a lot too. It almost looks like a samurai thing. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, that that see that one that. Schwartz is piloting. That's the one they actually have a figure of. Yeah. And it is cool. Uh, I'm glad they don't have this one though, because I would want this and two of the other one. And that would just be nuts. I would never be able to get that. 
Yeah. So anyway, the Ultra Swords able to defeat, and Greta kind of stands in front, like I'm going to protect you, like you've always protected me. And then they have this touching scene um, where he's sort of like, I couldn't save you, and she's like, I forgive you. You're here with me at the end, like it. It, it works. And it's then cool. a demonic possession takes place. <laughs> <where's> <laughs> her, yeah, the okay, the okay, audio okay, for that was hand. just chef's yes. kiss. Yeah, the hand blows out. It's just yeah, it's just wild. Just just get away. <laughs> It's just, yeah, that was wild. Then this guy's like, hey, but he's like still her, but possession of like, it's like, what is this character? It's yeah. it's sort of her corrupted, but also the other characters energy in this one. And they still have a human form. This kind of looks more male, but maybe it's just a monster. And then they have a female human form that says they're a man. And so it's like, they're definitely playing with identity and stuff here. This is a lot of ambiguity. The only thing that's not ambiguous is they are the antagonist. Yes. And, and Schwartz is dead super dead they don't show it but like the, the implication is that he was just sliced up and chopped up and, and stabbed in the gut and uh, well also they are very clear they're like there's no sparks there's no explosion that was a lot of blood i've never seen so much blood yeah like they they were all traumatized and it was good because like oh it got a little dark and they weren't like haha whatever it's like that is upsetting and i'm afraid to die it's like that's appropriate yeah that is appropriate i couldn't tell is this blood on her is this a scar is this a shirt i, I think it's an undershirt that's like see-through okay but it also like she has a tattoo and it's like yeah but it, but it also there. could be blood and that's just the effect they went with who knows it, but it, it's scary nonetheless it's intimidating yeah, i know but i couldn't figure out if like this is how she's always gonna look or this is how she looks because she just stabbed him or you know i i'm interested to see what they're gonna look like i feel like if that was blood there'd be blood on the jacket Good point. So that, but I don't think it's a shirt then because it's going up the neck. So I yeah, think, it's a half shirt, and then there's a a little like tube top bando thing in the middle. Yeah, maybe you're right. Double. Uh, so wait, but yeah, they run away because they're like, we don't want to die now. Right. We're just yeah. gonna they're gonna him away. Oh yeah, see there, it does look like a shirt. Maybe you're right, but going up. Yeah, I don't know. It might be a special effect. It's hard to tell. So yeah, they um, were sparks, those were blood, everything you were saying. And then everyone accounted for it. And then blue starts freaking out. We're gonna die. And yellow starts giving them the tough love treatment, which he did before. And pink's like, nah, not this time, lady. Yeah. She's like, Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. Must be difficult. Um, there's one scene that I'm curious what originally was put in. Either the audio or the video was bad, or something, because there is a very glaring cut into this with green and uh oh, orange yes. yes where they're clearly in front of a green screen and like yeah and I, I mean i'm guessing it's a reshoot that they couldn't be on the set for but and this is of course this is armchair quarterbacking monday morning quarterback whatever you call it because i'm looking at these sets and they're minimal and I'm, that's not an insult it's just true and so like if they had stood in front of a white wall and just shot from the waist up it could have been one of like you yeah. know, the fact they're on a green screen. Yeah, you're right. That was an odd choice. We're going to see it in a sec because it hasn't okay. happened oh, yet. Right there it is. Yes. Okay. So clearly green screen, mostly with the hair, you could tell. Um, And they have a window and they have the blue. But if they were just in front of any white walls and just, you know, you didn't see the blue. And they could have even put like tape there or something. But just any white walls, I feel like they could have got away with it. And it yeah. Was for, th for this, my critique would have been either – shoot them further back and use the green screen or mm -hmm. just have it be all white and call it good. And don't try to do the other portions. I wonder, it. do you think they were even in the same room together? I don't here's know. What, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking green is in front of like, you know, that small green screen we used that time, like one of those. So he has to be like kind of here. The footage never went anywhere. So I don't know. Yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> But, but I'm thinking that no fault of ours, but just let's not talk about that. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, but uh, it's a small, like a one person kind of green screen. You could squeeze two people in. So maybe it had to be close up because of the nature of that or something. But like, I'm wondering now was, is this green composited onto a plate of the background and orange, or is this green and orange composited together onto another one? Or is this three different images? Like, No, it, it kind of, now it does seem like they're together. I don't know if they're together. It's hard to say. Either way, I you had to do it, which is why it's in there. Right. To, to, moving on. 
Um, yeah, here's the reveal. Easter He's Bunny. How they, they have a plan to take... They have to bring the, the demon emperor into the world, which they did. Or wait, is it emperor? Emperor of Darkness. And then the other thing you have to do is destroy the source of imagination. And they're like, well, we don't know what it is. He's like, I did. You guys don't know? Because he always, he's he's like the big kid of the group. He always seems to know what's going on. And he's like, you know me as the conductor. The world knows me as the Easter Bunny. <laughs> I love that his suit is such an Easter suit. Like it matches perfectly. It's not. Yeah, I, I'll give him credit that at least like visually they hit it in plain sight very well. And he didn't go, oh, I'm the Easter Bunny. He's like, I am the, like, he's still just as serious. Like, he's like, because a minute ago, he's like, people die every day. This is serious business. And he's like, yeah, and I'm the Easter Bunny. This is, like, like I, I don't know, just it's so, the juxtaposition was was so weird. Like, like, he says it, like, he says it like he's angry. He's like, like, he's like this is serious. Like, I don't know. I got, I, no notes. I love it. Yeah. I, and that's episode four in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, um, enjoyed it. Again. Looking forward to five. Yeah. I think uh, definitely one of my favorites from all these. They're all good. This one I'd put pretty high up there. I don't remember how I ranked one and two. I know three dipped a little bit for yes. me. This, um, this brought it back up from the dip of three. For, yeah. For me. But yeah, four should be awesome. I mean, um, this. Five, you mean. Thank you. Four was awesome. Five should four be great. Awesome. Um, let me look really quick. You look, but do it really quick. Um, so just taking a look, this released last Friday. We're recording this uh, July 2nd, 2024. Yeah. Um, uh, so that means mm -hmm. episode three. Episode three came out three months ago. So every three to four months they're putting them out. I mean, they're, that's they're all. Really a pretty good clip. Yeah. Let me see. I had somebody mess. Oh. Do you already Zenith, get your offer? Wait, Zenith Films. Uh, will be represented at Power Morphicon. Heck yeah. Uh, and they are going to have a panel. So uh, we should try to talk to them, say hi, maybe get an interview, who knows what. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I, <laughs> I think that's probably not a secret, right? That they have a panel. And they're gonna no, no, no. Uh, the panel might be a secret. Um, them being there probably is it. I mean, it's probably fine. It's. <laughs> we'll, we'll ask for forgiveness instead of permission. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna uh, hold on. Is that a secret? Because I may have just mentioned it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut this if we have. To. Speaking of weird edits at the end of the show, <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, speaking of Morphicon, um, I know uh, now you're going to be on the lookout for Tokuger gear. We're going to be looking out for the. Uh, Rail Riders crew, whoever is there. Um, is there anything from you that's new mm -hmm. that you might want to mention to people or will be new? Artwork, you mean? I, anything. You being there is new. Yeah, I mean, I mean well, we we loosely discussed doing Go Go Loser Ranger cosplay, but we haven't talked about that since last week. I there I'm probably gonna bring my Gold Ranger suit just to have it as soon as I fit it in the car. I don't know if I'm gonna wear it or not because I want to, but it was like such a hard thing to pull off while tabling last year. But I'll probably bring it. Um, I I will have new art. If you haven't seen me since the last time you saw me at Power Morphicon, I will have a ton of new art. Six you years me, ago, yeah, I would hope so. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you saw me at Ranger Stop this year. I will only have a few new things, but one new thing that I should have that I've been working on. Actually, I'll show a little preview. Why not? Uh, that I've been working on. It's a commission, but I'm also going to make prints of it. Is a sort of a forever red thing. It's a, an homage to a Superman cover, um, but it's be, being replaced with Red Rangers. So I should have a print. Ooh. Yeah, I should have a print of that. Uh, That's going to look the, nice. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I'll have my table and the big dog will be at my table and uh, we will be there as Gazbot, not as Action Activity, but you can find us at the Gazbot table and, you know, maybe we'll get some interviews, but we definitely want to say hi to people and just fart around and smell our farts. Yeah. If you recognize us, let us know because oh, he, sure. he's gotten recognized for Action Activity. I haven't. That's fine. Uh, totally fine but uh i i do like talking to people as it is funny well and it's funny because you i think are more recognizable than i am maybe yeah. i'm wrong but i go to more shows than you do mm -hmm. so uh, you go to I more go ranger to specific ranger shows, shows. Yeah. yes yeah okay anyway i've been gasbot i am still the big dog and until rail riders episode five this is action activate 
to the power. See y'all later. Or go, go, loser ranger. Yeah. <laughs>